Hey, everybody. Um, well, just wanted, we received so many calls individually, we thought we'd gather you around and let you know what we know uh, and to the extent we can uh, answer any questions, we're here to answer those questions. Uh, the information, as you know, is still being gathered about what occurred uh, at roughly 6.45 a.m. this morning. Uh, the uh, incident uh, you have all, I think, well uh, chronicled uh, in some cases, Heather, literally, not just figuratively, over the course of the last number of hours. Uh, to the extent that the city has been impacted, there has been no fuel that has shown up on shore. Uh, we are nonetheless doing uh, what one should be doing, and that is requesting uh, prophylactically uh, the booms to be put on Treasure Island or around Treasure Island and Yerba Buena Island and some key habitat areas of concern uh, on port and redevelopment property, in the Islas Creek area, Heron's Head uh, areas like that. And Monique uh, Moyer behind me will answer more detail about that. Uh, but we have, in this case, a protocol that has been put into place after the trial and errors of 2007 with the Costco Basan. Uh, we have a much stronger relationship with the state fish and game, a much stronger relationship with our Coast Guard. As a consequence, uh, we are participating uh, with the incident at the Incident Command Center. Uh, we are working and sent uh, resources, human resources in this case, to the Incident Command Center, uh, which is in Alameda, as you know. Uh, we have uh, been in constant contact with the Coast Guard and Fish and Game, and I want to extend my appreciation to Captain Gar and uh, to Lieutenant Roberts of the State Fish and Game uh, for their willingness to collaborate uh, and their appreciation and understanding of the importance of the multiple jurisdictions that need to be all on the same page as it relates to this incident. Uh, I know perhaps a little more than I should, uh, so I'm going to, in the, to the extent that I will not um, expose any confidentiality, uh, say that it looks to be more than a hundred gallons, but less than a few thousand gallons. But then again, you had the hundred gallons that was five gallons initially, that became a hundred, uh, and I'm sure you may be reporting other things. The point of saying this is that it's fluid, and in this case, literally fluid, uh, and it's difficult to measure at this stage. Uh, but this is not of the magnitude by any stretch of the imagination uh, of the 2007 incident. Uh, they were quick uh, to uh, boom the vessel. Uh, they are uh, working with a company that uh, many of you know, uh, MSRC, which uh, does, I guess it's best described as they um, do the spill recovery. Um, they're the experts. Uh, they have the benefit uh, of a lot of new training and a lot of new equipment, though a lot of the equipment has uh, been historic equipment that's been used for decades. Nonetheless, there's been a lot of new equipment that has been provided regionally in the last six months and a lot more training that's been done coincidentally about six months ago on a similar type of incident. So they are, uh, from my perspective at this stage, based on the information that's been provided to us, uh, doing uh, an admirable job in terms of organizing efforts to contain the spill uh, and to begin to clean it up. I don't want to overpromise on the cleanup, but I was hearing some good news um, on our conference calls. Uh, that being said, we'll have another one shortly, uh, and it may not be as good. Uh, so again, this is uh, a situation where everyone is assessing uh, the facts in real time. Just to underscore the reason you've heard different numbers about the number of gallons that uh, may or may not have found their way into the bay, uh, the way you assess that, in this case, as you know, the vessel was not breached. It was a fueling issue, and to the extent that there was fuel in the water, there was also fuel on the deck. So what you do is you determine how much fuel was distributed, how much was disposed of inappropriately based upon the amount that you clean up off the deck, and that is the delta, the gap, based upon um, the uh, uh, estimates uh, that uh, would find their way into the bay. And so, again, those numbers are hardly precise at this moment, and that's why, again, the, the numbers keep moving around. The tides 
are constantly changing. The wind patterns become very significant. Uh, we're told that around 1 o'clock today, the wind will start shifting a little bit, and that's why uh, we decided to request the booms around Treasure Island and Yerba Buena Island, because the likelihood that things will move north and a little more east presents themselves. Uh, but by no means um, is that conclusive. Again, these are just estimates, and that's why those decisions are being made. Uh, our 311 call center is, uh, again, available for information, and they have, to the extent possible, updated information. So I want to encourage you to encourage the public to call 311 for information, not 911, uh, as we don't want to overwhelm the 911 emergency system. Uh, we, again, have uh, instilled a new protocol in terms of collaboration, uh, which again is working. And to that extent, we have also established our own EOC. Um, it, as you know, Emergency Operations uh, Center is now open, uh, or what EOC refers to as Emergency Operations Center, and that's in place as well. Uh, Rob, you see behind me, in Department of Emergency Management, will talk a little bit more about what that means and what it doesn't mean. Uh, and then, of course, you have Senator Mark Leno, who took the time to be here, which I appreciate, and the President of the Board of Supervisors, David Chu, um, that are here uh, and have been monitoring and uh, working closely with us uh, in terms of capturing information and the facts uh, so that we can, in real time, uh, distribute those facts. The one lesson, again, of 2007 was people operating on their own, lack of coordination and collaboration, uh, and information gathering uh, was an issue, and information distribution was an issue. So in this case, we want to continue to monitor at least closely the situation and communicate to the extent possible in real time with you the facts um, to the extent that we receive them. So with that, uh, Rob, uh, I'll ask you to come up and you can just uh, illuminate us further on the EOC and uh, any facts that I did not present. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as the mayor uh, indicated, we have opened our emergency operations center uh, just a few minutes ago. And the purpose behind that is essentially to allow us as the city to operate as one unit with the Coast Guard in the state. We also have representatives, the battalion chief from the fire department and one of my staff actually at the Coast Guard's incident command post and they're participating in that incident command structure. This is a significant change from what happened in 2007. Uh, at that point, we were kind of isolated, all local governments were, and information was very spotty. That is definitely not the case now. Uh, we've worked very closely with the state and the Coast Guard over the past you know, ensuing couple of years to uh, make that so it's not the case. As a matter of fact, we just exercised that a couple of days ago. So we've been able to really play with this concept of having local government representation at the regional level involved directly with them. And at this point, San Francisco has joined that effort and we will continue to do so, you know, we'll continue to be there until we need it. The operations center here in the city will then serve to coordinate the efforts among all the departments. So as we deploy resources and personnel, that's where a lot of the decisions will be made about what goes where and at what time things happen. And we'll also start to route as much, you know, public information through that as possible. So we make sure that we have the most accurate information available to the mayor and to you. Good, Ron. Well, you spell your last name? Uh, D U D G E O N. What's the title? Uh, Deputy Director of Emergency Management. He's our point person for all this, and uh, we have Chief Joanne Hayes White here as well. And Chief, uh, just the extent that you wish to fill in any blanks, uh, appreciate. It. Certainly. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as uh, Deputy Director Dudgeon described, uh, early on this morning, uh, after we had word of the spill, we went ahead and deployed one of our battalion chiefs over to Coast Guard Island, which is located in Alameda County, to uh, assist and participate actively at the command post. Um, we're also preparing to partner with the port at any time if we feel we need to, uh, from the city side, deploy boom. And so one of our fireboats, the Fireboat Guardian, will be working with the members of the port to deploy boom if that becomes necessary. As the mayor indicated, we've been getting regular updates uh, and monitoring this situation very carefully. One other thing I wanted to add, because it is a question that will come up after the fact, is that each city department that is actively participating, and I will say because I was here in 2007, um, this is much better coordinated early on than what we saw in 2007, and we are appreciative 
uh, to Fish and Game and Coast Guard that we have a seat at the table and are partnering with them. Each of the city departments that are utilizing resources are closely tracking the resources so that we will be able to identify exactly what staff and equipment and resources were used to assist with this effort. And that's all I have at this time. Thanks, Chief. And I want to ask uh, Senator Leonard to come up. As some of you may recall, uh, Senator Leonard held a series of hearings after the 2007 incident and sponsored some legislation to address uh, similar circumstances. I don't expect that he expected to be back 24 months later uh, in the city. I don't think any of us did, uh, but he's here. And I'd ask uh, the senator to ask, answer or comment, make some questions, comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Questions, comments, <laughs> do whatever you want. Mark. Thank you. And the mayor has uh, laid out the immediate response, which uh, does not allow for the kind of finger pointing that there was back in November of 2007. But I think you probably have questions as to if the ship was immediately boomed and the area contained, why is there still a mile long uh, visible oil sheen in the water as uh, we speak? And the fact is that the technology used in this booming is from the 1960s. There's never really been much updating of it. And given the significant tides, winds, and waves of our bay, choppier than most waters, uh, the containment is only about 30 to 40 percent, which is why we now need to, as the mayor has appropriately, uh, move forward to boom the islands in the bay. So work we did in the committees last year led to legislation which I uh, authored, which unfortunately was vetoed. Of course, I'm going to go back and have a closer look at those veto messages. But what that legislation would have done is create the California oil spill prevention and cleanup technology grants so that we could, through the Office of Spill Prevention and uh, Response, have emerging technologies reviewed so that we can bring this technology into the 21st century, uh, which I think is still necessary. Uh, so we'll continue working on that. Thanks. Thank you, Senator. And, and Monique, do you want to just uh, add anything about the ports um, protocols at this stage and maybe just add a little bit more? I mentioned Islas Creek and Herons. Just some of the ideas, I mean, again, we're, what, we're, what we're thinking of doing and what we actually have done in terms of requests. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Monique Moyer with the Port of San Francisco. Um, it, uh, the, the most important thing that the mayor said that I just want to underscore is that this has not touched ground. That is a significant difference in the city's ability to respond. As you may recall, in the Costco Busan, we learned about the oil spill when the oil arrived at the Port of San Francisco. This time we have lots of advance notice. What the mayor was referring to is that in the intervening two years, we've been able to use Homeland Security money to get much more uh, boom to, to lay along the port's waterfront. We have that in several different areas of the waterfront. The assets that we are watching carefully are Mission Creek, Islaus Creek, the Pier 94 wetlands, Heron's Head Park, and then going north, of course, we're watching the Sea Line Sanctuary at Pier 39 and the historic vessels at Pier 45. And as the tides move, which was a key factor in November 7th of 2007, we will, uh, we will be watching that and be ready. The port's fishing fleet is on standby to help lay and deploy boom or pick up oil. The Coast Guard has moved in vessels that both lay boom but also pick up the oil sheen. The importance for us is to get this off of the bay before it sinks as it did in the past. And so we're standing by and ready and I want to thank uh, the mayor and all of the folks you see behind us for their leadership in getting on this early and often and with a loud voice. Thank you. And we, uh, we're we're assessing um, whether or not to make um, a, well, we're assessing to make a decision and then a subsequent announcement as to whether or not we will request common sense would dictate this, that people not go swimming in the bay uh, and or go out on their fishing boats. Uh, I would imagine most people would understand that uh, to the extent that we'll make that formal. Uh, I think it may be forthcoming. Um, and you know, you're in good shape, Mr. Captain Lynch, uh, <laughs> Deputy Chief Lynch, yeah. and uh, David, anything? Or? No, obviously the board, uh, I'm here to represent the board. Uh, I sit on the city's disaster council and also the state's uh, Bay Commission. Uh, and uh, with the board, we'll be ready to, uh, uh, if necessary, with any emergency legislation to support the efforts of the city. So.
And we are, you know, this is a question that's always asked. Yes, we are accounting for this. Uh, and we've already have our accounting people making sure there's an appropriate account uh, for all the departments impacted and affected by this. So we will aggregate all of that and request the appropriate reimbursement. The city attorney and others will go through the similar protocol and uh, we will do everything we can to protect the city's financial interests. Uh, but most importantly, deal with the environmental concerns, which are self-evident as the primary focus of all of our efforts right now. Or soon, or what, yeah, we requested that they, uh, around Yerba Buena Island and around uh, Treasure Island, and we've request, we requested that of the, uh, of the incident command, and so that is being processed as we speak. So what time, say, is that uh, To be determined. I mean, it, again, that's, that's uh, I, I, we're point of caution, we're doing that. We don't feel necessarily that that needs to be done. Uh, or should have been done 20 minutes or two hours ago, but we are assessing that and we've made that request and to the extent that they put them out, we hope it's in short order. Today, I mean, we'll oh yeah, no, today, certainly, and Rob. Today, oh, we, we expect, yeah, expect, unless there's, again, here's the challenge, nothing is fixed here. Things, the wind patterns, the, uh, the wave uh, patterns could change dramatically and then make that move and we would deploy resources elsewhere. So again, it's being assessed, but the request has already been made. Thank you. Mayor, how did the response change when the estimate went from one to five gallons to hundreds, maybe uh, thousands? Was, uh, and did you believe one yeah, to five no, gallons when you first got it? Because I, 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 that was what we were told in 07. You didn't believe it? You, can, you just look at the team, look at the pictures. So, so the, what confidence do you have then that the current estimates I, are right? We can blow that out of proportion. You're the first one there on the phone with you to say, that, that those estimates were modest and do not, do not repeat those estimates. Now, to the extent that you may have gotten a call, I can't account for that. But when we were on the phones with the Coast Guard and, uh, and Fish and Game, they were the first to say, do not buy the estimates that came but out. But isn't the lesson of 2007 to over rather than underestimate? And that's why they did overestimate their response. And they are the, they had, I think, have done an adequate job in terms of the way they deployed resources. Uh, they assumed the worst in terms of the deployment of those resources. But one to five was, one to five gallons was the worst? Again, I never said five gallons to the extent that they may have. They didn't tell me that privately right. and we acted accordingly. We never acted. I mean, didn't the staff get, a, get, a, get an alert on their, on their blackberries that said one to five gallons? The city and county of San Francisco and its conversations with the Coast Guard and with Fish and Game never had a conversation about five gallons. So to the extent that you guys reported five gallons, I'd ask you where that came from, but that's something for you and your producer to figure out. As the mayor uh, and as city department heads, we never did. You want to come around this? Nate, Nate, Nate. Yeah, that came from your office. Okay, well then to the extent that Nate and I will have a conversation, but the conversations we had with the city employees and with our folks is that uh, was not the case. Are not being laid out around the city border yet? Or? They're not, no. We're, we're looking at sensitive areas and they have, we've made the request and those resources are being um, organized and we will make the determination as to whether or not they need to be put in those sensitive areas. But again, the primary focus based upon the new weather and wind and wave estimates is that things will look to be moving east, north, east. And that's why Yerba Buena Island and Treasure Island are primary focus. Mr. Mayor, you might mention that the ferries are operating as normal yeah. are expected to handle the evening There you are. The ferries are operating normally, expected to handle an evening commute exacerbated by critical mass. And the Bay Bridge closure. And Halloween tomorrow. Some had suggested maybe the Bay Bridge should remain closed through Halloween. <laughs> Uh, well, no, let's, let's do this so I can. Did you discuss like how exactly it was caused? Refueling, I, I got that, but what does that mean? Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get out uh, in terms of those details yet, uh, again. What do we think at this point? Uh, I, there, there's not a, I, what I said, I, I, what I said, I stand by what I said. So, and, uh, and they're assessing again. The, 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 it is not a hundred gallons, it's more than that, and it's not, that many thousand gallons, but that's being assessed. And those are the numbers that they have directly provided me, uh, not to my staff. 
You were criticized in 2007 for being in Hawaii after the Costco so I, I, wasn't, I was here. I was with many folks you see behind me uh, and uh, did a similar event. Uh, in Bayview Hunters Point, we were talking about, in fact, we had an event at the Morant plant. Remember the deal on Morant being closed in 2007? You were all there. Uh, we spent 24 hours here, and I was promised that everything was fine. The Coast Guard and Fish and Game said, don't worry, it's only a few gallons. It's under control. Lesson learned. And the lesson for you was? Don't believe it? Trust but verify. So you'll be here for the weekend? Uh, <laughs> I think uh, political stories will be written by Phil Mateer on Sunday. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.